All right, so we have Trisha Malfetta, head coach over at Pace. Trish, it's great to have you on the uh, LILJ here. How's everything going? Thanks so much, Corey. Everything's going well, as can be expected right now. Um, how are you doing? We're good, good. Everyone in the, in the community is uh, healthy, which is kind of all you can ask for at this point. And things are starting to, I guess, look a little bit, a little bit better down on Long Island. I know you guys are in kind of a hot spot as well. Or, you know, do, do things seem to be settling down a little bit in the hospital system and all that? Yeah, it seems that way um, from, you know, what I'm seeing and hearing from our um, administration and things like that. It seems like things are heading in a, in a pretty positive direction um, for the most part. So Good. Yeah, we were talking a little bit earlier before we came on just about how things ended for, for kind of like your team and specifically your seniors. Do you just want to kind of touch on just um, just like the whole experience and how you guys as, as a program are, are getting through it and just kind of helping your girls each step of the way? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think it was definitely that first week, just a complete shock. I mean, we left March 11th or 12th, something like that. And then we went on spring break. So they didn't have any classes, you know, we didn't have any remote learning. So that was, I, I mean, it was the toughest week for me personally, because it just felt so unknown. And, you know, everything had come to a stop so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, we've kind of just been putting the pieces back together. We've been doing a lot of things where we're working on, you know, mindfulness and, uh, you know, some meditative things, just trying to um, train and engage other pieces of our game and, you know, thinking about like our performance and reflecting back on those things. So, um, you know, that piece of it has been really cool. We've been doing um, as a group, a lot of journaling. Um, so each of them has a little Google doc that they kind of have ownership of and, and what they're writing in. So um, yeah, and communicating virtually is just a new, a whole new um, level of different. Um, so we're, you know, using FaceTime and Zooms and things like that. But um, now that we're kind of in the swing of things, I think week five we're on at this point, mm -hmm. it's been good. You know, I've been getting them to engage a little more with one another and things like that. So we've, you know, still been, um, you know, keeping in, in touch with the people that we need to and, you know, trying to withhold and upstand our, uh, you know, core values as a team too. What are some of the core values that you, your team and your program, you live by? Yeah, so some of them, um, I just, we had like a small competition with our girls where each of them, um, if they wanted to, so some of them are really inclined, you know, artistically and in graphic design. So, um, they made like these graphics of our non-negotiables and like our core values. So um, joy is one of them. Um, grateful, competition, grit. Um, I'm missing two off the top of my head right now. But um, yeah, so we're just talking about like ways that we can do it daily with our family members or, mm -hmm. you know, using school and things like that. And um, I think one of the, the biggest things right now is being grateful and practicing gratitude on a daily basis for our health and, you know, just for the ability to kind of wake up and go to school and make the most of that opportunity. Yeah, you mentioned earlier about your girls journaling. I just like, I didn't have my notepad I normally work on because I'm, I'm like working from home and I found this like, just like book that I've yeah. just been doing, like, I put my notes and to-dos on, and and I kind of like it, because it's keeping, like, the start of the book is when this this mess kind of yeah. started, so I have it all kind of documented, but um, for you, like, why why are you kind of having your girls journal, and, like, why do you feel as though that's something that just um, is in line with, with how you think it might be productive and positive to get through this time? You know, any way that they can um, take ownership of their feelings and feel like they have some sort of um, control, I think is a really important thing right now because so much is out of their control and out of everyone's control across the world. Um, and so I think journaling and I think specifically like journaling about lacrosse related things and what they're doing at home with their families is something that they can really see um, trends and behaviors and patterns in over a time period. And, you know, I think some of them are really recognizing um, the benefits of that and, you know, how much they're releasing emotionally through writing. Um, so they're not just like holding it in. And, you know, it's also really beneficial for me because then I can look at their journals and go back and be like, okay, let's talk about this, you know, what's going on here. Um, so it kind of gives me a little more insight to how they're feeling and thinking and things like that during this time period. 
Yeah, I really, I really like that. That's such a great idea. And you mentioned like just so many things are out of your control and uh, it's, it's so true, but that is something that you, you can really control and expand upon. I think sometimes too, and I've just kind of heard this from other coaches and through my personal experience, like those initial Zoom meetings you have, there's like, it's like, what do you say, right? You're like, this sucks. Like I'm bored. Yeah. You know, I I've, I've get that a lot. It's like, I'm bored. I got a lot of work. Like, I don't know, whatever. And then like, you kind of just go pen to paper and you're just, it's just you and your book. And all of a sudden, like your thoughts just start pouring out and expanding. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to, to kind of put your stamp on, you know, what's going on right now and look back on. So I think that's, that's such a, that's such a great idea, um, which is really cool. Let's, let's maybe go a little bit back um, in time with your personal coaching yeah. journey. I'm just kind of curious what led you to Pace. Um, you know, it's, it was a great opportunity, I think, um, to be in the NE10 and to be competing against some of the best teams in the country was what was super appealing. It's a brand new program. Um, it had only, you know, we only graduated our first group of seniors in 2018. So it was new. Um, and I had gotten there, I'm the second coach to be there. And, um, there was something that was just really special about the group of people and, you know, the administrators, everyone that was around the program. And, um, what they were trying to build, they were pretty bought into. So, you know, I'm just lucky to have an opportunity to lead a group of players who were, you know, willing to buy in and, and determined to kind of take the next jump in the program too. So it's been fun. I, I love it. Um, I'm really lucky. How would you kind of describe the the personality of your team and like, what are you kind of looking for in a recruit? Yeah, I think the personality of our team, you know, we're definitely a competitive bunch. Um, that's something I really look for. I look for kids that, you know, want to work hard, all of those things. Um, kids that have and and don't mind doing the intangibles. So picking up a ground ball and things like that are, are important pieces, you know, fundamentally to our program. And other than that, you know, we um, we try and, and have joy every single day and find joy in what we do. And you know, whether it's laughing in the middle of practice or in the middle of a drill, we try and, um, you know, just really put our why first. And, um, you know, for me, that's just figuring out a way to be authentic with them and get the most out of them. And um, what we found over the course of, you know, the three years that I've been there so far is that um, they play better when they're loose. And so when we are able to plan practices that get them playing loose and having fun and you know, not so regimented, that's when they're going to perform their best. Um, and it, I mean, it doesn't happen every day, but for the most part, when we can do that and have a good practice in that sense. Um, yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. It's, it's always fun to be able to be in the groove while like you're feeling, you're like, you're enjoying the moment and, and yeah. you're, kind of, you're loose and everyone's on the same page. So that's, uh, that's gotta be a really a fun environment to play for. Um, I noticed last year, I mean, your team went on an incredible run to end the season. I think it was like six or seven games in a row. Um, and, you know, you guys lost a heartbreaker, it seemed, towards the end of the year. Um, so with all that momentum, you know, I guess what kind of sparked that first and foremost, and how have you been able to carry that into what was happening this year in 2020? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, 2018 was our first year um, graduating senior class. So we were fairly young in 2019. And you know, one of our best players had had a career ending injury. So we were kind of trying to re-identify ourselves through, um, through life without her in a lot of ways. And it took us, it took us a long time to do so in the spring. And once we kind of hit our groove and, and found some momentum, you know, there was always that belief. We always knew we could do that. It was just kind of, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? And, um, you know, April was fun because we were just, we were rolling and, um, you know, they were really playing at a, at a level that um, they were taking ownership and we had found our identity. And so a lot of things were kind of coming together at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we pretty much returned all of our scoring for 2020, which was great because it was, you know, not so much of a rebuild for that piece of it. Um, and so we just kind of used the momentum from last year and kind of continued to build and um, we had a really strong group of seniors this year um, and I have a, a very strong group of juniors so you know they're really determined you know our, my upperclassmen at this point to kind of keep pushing the envelope and, and wanting more. So you're playing in one of the most probably the most competitive conference in, uh, in D2 like can you just explain the makeup of the NE10 for someone who maybe doesn't know some of the teams that you compete against um, you know week in week out? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, we start competing in conference the second week in March or sometimes the third week in March. So it's early. It's early to start playing those conference games. And, um, you know, the conference is made up of two of the best teams, two of the top two teams in Division Two, Lemoyne and Adelphi. Um, you know, Adelphi's won a bunch of national championships. They won in 2019 and Lemoyne won in 2018. And, um, you know, the rest of the NE10 is all – top 20 teams as well um you know not the whole majority of the conference but a big portion so you know we play every single game not knowing what the outcome is going to be and mm -hmm. it's a really competitive and challenging conference and it's challenging to prepare for you know that kind of competitiveness wears on you at times but our kids thrive off of it and you know they they look kind of love the pressure in a lot of ways so um it makes it fun to have to prepare for teams that um you know, you're not sure if you're going to be on any single given day. So um, it's, it's definitely a challenge, but it's fun. And what are some things that you're trying to do with the program to, you know, just keep climbing in such a competitive environment and kind of like match, um, you know, match those competitors of the Lemoines and the Adelphi's and, you know, get to where they are, which is winning national championships and winning conference championships. Yeah. I think part of it is, you know, getting, um, getting the belief and, and the buy-in and the confidence to do so and, and think that, you know, we, we can do it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's taken a little while for us to kind of get to that point. I feel like this year we were so confident um, going in and yeah, we, we, we really kind of started also recruiting a little bit differently in that sense of recruiting kids who, you know, maybe had some experience playing at a really high level in high school which has made a big difference because kids that have played in big moments, so, you know, understand what that looks like when they get to it in college. Um, so that's kind of helped us from a competitive standpoint, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so one, one way I always like to leave um, the conversation is just kind of like maybe just a general piece of advice. So a lot of, a lot of <laughs> girls who are kind of going through the process right now, you know, it's, it's a difficult time just because of all the uncertainty and, you know, especially, you know, if like, let's say a junior or sophomore season, which are big years, they kind of get canceled because right now there's no high school sports at the moment. Um, what's maybe something that you can offer up to those, those girls who are just trying to do everything that they can to get better and get exposure and, you know, hopefully get recruited to a great program like yours one day? Yeah, I think, you know, it's hard and it's hard for everyone right now. And I think that the biggest thing is not to get frustrated with the little things. Um, you know, I think, it's going to be a challenging time period for an unknown amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of keeping the big picture in mind and, you know, really believing that there will be the right spot for you at the end of the day. Awesome. Well, that's great advice. And uh, Coach Malfetta, we really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Corey. I appreciate it.